Well guys, this is the 580 Super L I went through the power shift on. And it's got other problems. It's clunking in the rear end and it's kind of what I suspected that uh, old Jim there, he's a guy I met off YouTube. Talked to him about every other day now, bullshitting with him. We're kind of like a couple of hands that get to talk in there next telling stories and we're on the phone for three hours. But uh, I called him, uh, I said, you know, some bitch is clunking in the rear end. He says, yeah, the brakes are out of you. They get down there and they slam on the brakes and tear the spines out of the brakes where they spline on the axle. And that's kind of what it sounds like. You can hear it right here, the socket off. Hear that slop? It's really loud when you, when you shuttle shift from forward to reverse. So we're gonna start pulling things apart here. Let me start the truck. Start building air. Yeah, it's kind of odd. You know, last last summer I didn't hardly do, and even in the winter, I think, I'm trying to remember if I did any power shift work. I don't think I did any. And the year before that, I went through like five or six different power shifts, and it's shaping up to be another summer of power shifts. I went through this Baco power shift Clark four speed transmission. I've got a JCB, another 541 Agra uh, coming with a power shift rebuild. And then I've got an 8300T that's going to be low boyed into the shop tomorrow that's lost CR pack. And that, and another power shift rebuild. So, yeah, uh, shaping up to be a really busy, busy summer. So, yeah, it's been absolutely chaotic the other, uh, lately. That 8300T, I went and looked at it. That's the one, if you guys watched the video, a couple, wasn't this winter, last winter, the winter before last, I in-framed the engine, that 8.1 PowerTech. Um, I in-framed the engine on that one. So, he was kind of really debating on whether he wanted to even do it. And we had to get some, we kind of had to fine-tune some numbers and get it a, a pretty decent estimate for him and usually you can do those if there's no really major major damage like bad shafts or drums you know usually you can do you know one for around anywhere from I told him I try to give myself a little Louis leeway in case I do have a bad shaft or something that's gonna cost me a couple grand you know I figured about eight to twelve thousand and he said you know what he says it is kind of getting an old tractor, but he said I'm going to do it. He said I'm I'm going to I'm going to get it fixed. So they're low boying it in tomorrow, and I don't know. I've been every time I get in the shop, it's just I get I get so many little projects too this time of the year. You know, um, swather won't start or something. Fuel shop solenoids bad or. You know, and every time every five minutes you're getting called out of the shop, and it seems like you just never can concentrate on these huge projects that you've got going like this Peterbilt uh, engine thing I really want to get going on that and concentrate on it but might be doing that on a Sunday when everybody's leaving me alone so yeah as you can see the phone's ringing I'm getting called out right now as we speak oh. Okay, I'm gonna get this valve off too for the thumb that they've added to the back end. Get the brake lines here off, tap those, diff lock line. If you have a guys that haven't got a pair of these, man, the harder you pull, the tighter they grip. I mean, these things are awesome. Alright, let me get some caps out here and I'm thinking somewhere in the range of maybe this size. I grabbed three different sizes here. And I don't think I got well that one there is pretty good. Yeah. Maybe the next size down be a little better. I like that more better. Okay. How about that one? Or that? Okay. 
Uh, cut the zip tie off and then actually, yeah, I need to cut the zip tie off. Well, you dirty bastard, just pulling the whole switch out. That's going to be too big. All right, plug that, get a pair of dikes, cut that off. And then I need something to hold that with. one of the old ranchers that I've known for pretty much most of my life wanting to know how the hell do you get on YouTube so he could watch me <laughs> I thought it was funny well, I don't know how the hell you get on her I'd like to watch it Okay, drive line needs to come out. That's a bad thing. If you don't get it up against that seat, you know, the plug doesn't go up against that seat. They just have to continually drip. I might see if I got some number four plugs right quick and plug those brake lines. Let me see if I got some number four actual JAC plugs. That'll be better. Well, guys, I. Got called out of the shop. Bad time. Of, bad thing about this time of the year. You're constantly. You'll get a bunch of tools and stuff out, and then guys are haying, and the strawberry guys are going, and then this guy was actually a logger, and that old log loader over there. They went over there and I wired it correctly. He said, "I want this wired right." The people that had it had it all jerry rigged. The, I said, well, obviously you could tell that they must have had a problem with the wiring going into the cab to the house. So what they did, they were just touching, tying wires together on the bottom to start it. They would, you know, they'd tie the fuel shut off solenoid to power and then they would just take another wire and jump over to the start solenoid and start it. Well, I said, well, we can do it a little better than that. I said, it's still not going to be right, but I said, let's at least try to make some kind of effort or attempt to 
make it a little better by let's just put a toggle switch and a push button you can turn the toggle switch on and turn the fuel shut off solenoid on then push the push button and when you want to shut it off just turn the toggle switch off i think that so that's what we i went over there and wired that for them and got that going so it's a little <laughs> looks like doesn't look so bad you know what are you doing oh i'm just tying wires together so i can run and load my logs yeah it's kind of an old shitter it's not it's really not that bad i've seen guys will say what they want well, on some of them self-loaders, I got a customer that's got an old Barco 450. And that thing is an absolute pile of shit. I mean, the only thing it's worth is scrap price. Every ram on it, they've got buckets tied on the boom to catch the oil on the boom cylinders. That's how bad it is. And they won't fix anything. Oh. those pins in there for now uh, I like doing that sort of thing just keep track of stuff a lot easier speaking of keeping track of stuff where'd the cutter pins go I got those magnetic parts right I guess I could throw them in there I right, will just stick them in here golly guys I got a lot of irons in the fire right now a lot of irons in the fire And I've just been going hard enough that I'm just about ready at that point to where I'm going to just leave early one day, go home, and take a nice long nap. Because I just, I get so tired and so run down that I just don't give a shit. People can want all they want, and I mean, pretty much your body, your mind says, yeah, I want to go. But pretty soon your body says, piss on you, I've had enough. I've been put in the hospital before for exhaustion. I have. I've run so hard and run myself down. And I know where I get to a point now to where it just goes, you just gotta say enough is enough. You know, this is, we're not doing anymore. Now this valve, I gotta change this valve anyway. Cause it's leaking back and lets the thumb leak off. So I'm not gonna uncap anything yet. I'm just gonna unbolt it right here. And then, pretty much, we're ready to pull it out of there. And if I wouldn't have got cold out, usually you can have these things. If you're if you're not tired and worn out like I am right now, and dragging ass, you can uh, have one. You can have one out on the ground in an hour, hour and a half. If you're really moving along, these are really great. Like a 580K, totally different story. Totally different story. Oh yeah, drive line. Drive line. It might be very important to remove the drive line. Alright, I'll grab a couple different that's quarter inch. What size is that goodie there? That's 930 seconds. Where's my 516 set? Alright there. It's gone. amazing. Ever since I've made that comment about old Bill's wig at Wyoming Tech, I couldn't believe how many people have commented that went to Wyoming Tech and knew who he was when I said it. <laughs> Guy was about, I don't know, maybe five foot nine and weighed about. I bet he weighed 400, 450 pounds. He was a diabetic and an alcoholic. Not a very good combination. 
but he was a hell of a good guy. I'll tell you what, I got along with him good. Some people didn't know what to think, because he, he didn't like knuckleheads. We'd get some people that were, you know, I grew up farming and around logging and all that kind of stuff my whole life, and I was always around equipment. So I, you know, it, it's not that you're probably better or whatever than someone else. It's just you're, you've been around it more. And there was kids that would go into that school that have never, ever been around machinery, and it was completely evident. I mean, there was guys, there was one kid in there with an N14 Select, you know, they had all these engines lined up there and you're supposed to run the overheads on them well the instructors when i was there they wanted you to start them with the valve cover off and so we did that well this kid he ran his overhead and he started it with the jake heads off and there was oil squirting i don't i remember oil squirting 20 feet in the air and he's got it wide open, running it, and the oil squirting everywhere, and the instructors are running down there telling him to shut it off, and I'm going, wow. What a knucklehead. Now, old Bill, he'd get on your ass about stuff like that. Well, you know, he's just trying to, trying to learn you something. I mean, that's one thing. Some guys can't take an ass chewing very well, you know? It's like I told the guy the other day, I said for years, when I was a kid, I always thought my name was Son of a Bitch, because that's what my dad called me. I never knew what my real name was. Or Little Son of a Bitch, when I was a kid. Yeah, you Little Son of a Bitch, go over here. Oh, I hear text messages or something going off on my phone. I had an 8300T I went and looked at this morning. And, oh, yeah, what was I saying? I was talking about old Bill. But Bill, he, he was a good guy. Worked for Cat for, I don't know, he was a Cat mechanic for 25, 30 years. Then he became an instructor at Wyoming Tech. And he, he knew Caterpillar now. We always gave him a hard time. He was such a big guy that we told him we were going to we were gonna put a set of Jake brakes on him. So when he was going to chew somebody's ass or and running down there to shut an engine off because it was running away or something that we wanted to make sure he could stop on time <laughs> he was a good dude i was talking to a guy down oh fellow youtuber that went to class with him here the day on the phone he said he i guess he heard that he died recently so maybe a year or two ago I'm just surprised he lasted as long as he did, man, with the shape he was in when I was there. And that was a long time ago. I went to Wyo Tech in 99 or 2000, I think it was. Shit, he was old when I was there. Okay. All right, guys, I'm going to get the forklift out here and drive it underneath it and uh, take the bolts loose, lower it down, pull it out of there. Well, I don't know. There's probably guys that all they do is work on construction equipment. And I don't know. I've, I've pulled quite a few rear ends out of quite a few different backhoes over the years. Um, if I'm out in the field, I kind of do it the cowboy way. Uh, <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll either, I'll get them loose enough to where, and I'll set a couple blocks on the ground, and then I'll just lower the stabilizers down, I'll pull the tires off, and I'll, I'll just lower the stabilizers, you know, raise them up, actually, to where the machine goes down with the tires off, and set the whole ass in right on the box, and then I'll just finish unbolting it, and I get my block spaced out to where I can still get on the bolts with an in wrench to get the like the last two out one on each side and I'll just take it loose right there and I'll lift the machine off of it and take my crane and just drag it out from underneath it and when I go to put it back in I kinda just get it close I've come along them underneath them before and when I didn't have anything else to do you know I've come I've set them down there with the crane and 
you can't really get a spreader bar and, and type set up with the boom and everything and and the cab and everything in the way like you can on like a skitter or something like that where you kind of got to you know a little more room over the over that but anyway it, it's all possible but these Carrero rear ends I really I really like the Carrero transmissions too in these backhoes they're really simple to work on and they're economical to work on uh, the rear ends are economical I think uh, I bought the brake uh, ordered the brake kits for the well and I ordered all the rubber parts for the the, the holders up there for this one doesn't this boom doesn't have auxiliary hydraulics on it. It's just got so if you have auxiliary hydraulics, those hose holders up there, you guys know what I'm talking about. The rubber ones that break all the time, that hold the hoses up for the extend of hoe and everything, and the and the dipper and all that crap. But anyway, uh, they uh, that and the brake kits was 1,100 bucks for everything. And I can tell you right now that if that was a uh, a uh, caterpillar or a deer would have been probably twice that much. So the the Carrero stuff on the case side is pretty economical to work on. Now this Clark transmission, on the other hand, that's in this power this power shift that's in this one. Well, if you go through the right people, it's economical. But what's kind of odd about this is Jim was a was a you know he worked for Case for years, and the old guys that he used to work for the dealership. He still knows them really well, and my dealer was quoting me like twenty-four grand for the parts for this thing, and then uh, it's kind of weird. He called his dealer that he deals with, and they could get everything for like four thousand. I ended up getting them for forty-four hundred from an outfit called EM West and Eugene. They're a Clark powertrain distributor. That's all they do is do powertrain, power shift rebuilds for construction equipment with Clark, you know, Clark transmissions, Clark rear ends. And, uh, yeah, I had one outfit tell me that none of the parts were available. It was that Palmer Johnson telling me that none of the parts were available for this transmission anymore. And I'm so, okay. The back was not that old. It's a super L. It's not like it's a 580C, you know, made back in the seventies, but who knows with this day and age.
Okay guys, I was having a little bit of trouble finding the problem, but as you can see, there's where all our noise is coming from. I knew it was on this right side. See the teeth are busted off? The brake, uh, the spacer plate off the metal? That's where all the slop and the noise is coming from. Okay, so we're going to replace both of them. And we're just going to do the brakes on both sides. I'm just going to get... I'm going to do the steels and the plates on both sides. But yeah, I just busted them off. And that's where all that... That's where all the slop was coming from. It was right there. That's, that's from slamming on the brakes. A lot of times from slamming on the brakes on the pavement. Yeah. Trying to get a better view so you guys can see everything, but it's knocked them off. So, anyways, there is that. So I'll get parts ordered. Well, we got our parts ordered. Got a couple brake kits, and I'm going to throw these in the cab. Got a sack. Hold on a second. I need two hands. Oh, this thing's gonna have new brakes. New brakes. Then I can find the valve back here for the thumb. I need to get a number off that or something. I think it's just a Vickers or maybe a Parker valve. What is that? APB. Yeah, it's a Vickers valve. Just a solenoid spool valve. Uh, let's see here. Are any of these numbers still legible? 12 volt DC. There might be a part number there I might be able to read. Oh my god, I can still read a part number. G. Can't tell if that's a C or a zero. I think it's a C. 508172. I need one of them. Has anybody got one? There's a rebuilt transmission in there. About $15,000, $20,000 in this son of a bitch by the time it's all said and done. And we had 10 into the transmission. He won't have much in it doing this. I ordered all the rubber holders that are up broke up there that hold the hoses for the extended hole. So, anyways, um, got all that tied up. Oh, what I was going to ask somebody. Hey, I know there's some railroad guys that watch this channel. Hey, I got a customer that bought a cat. Clear back in Alabama at an auction, a GSA auction. And he was wondering if somebody knew of a way. If somebody give me some information to who to contact, if we could get that thing on a rail car heading west. I don't know if that's possible or not. I don't know much about that sort of stuff. But if you do contact me at uh, WLRFIXINIT at gmail.com. So it's WLRFIXINIT at gmail.com. Yeah, get a hold of me. Uh, my customer keeps asking me to ask somebody on YouTube. So, anyways. All right, guys. Thanks for watching.